Yeah, tell me how how was everything? How did it all come together? And- Hello. <laughs> Welcome to Malaysia. Thank you. a limited time just a month and then the first one or two weeks were really just to get to know them you know like what resource they have the team member what other things that are feasible for them what they have been doing what they're thinking about doing is like a bit of a briefing session you know in the last 300 years there's been an almost 90 percent decline the decline was greater than 70 percent uh, in the wild and so the they are now listed as critically endangered. You see human population growth, it's like in China. So what's happening with wildlife in China? Wow. Well, we don't really have that much. That's what's happening in Africa. So the only big places left, fortunately, are Africa or South America, where there is wildlife available. Animals need a lot. You know, these giraffe will show something like that. You know, they move far distances in between to get enough food. Would you pay five dollars a month to protect giraffe in the wild? Everyone said yes. Okay, now put the five dollars on the table. And so that's the difference. It's the thinking, watching these nature documentaries versus the doing. While nothing is being done, this land is shrinking, getting chopped up. These are sort of the major factors, but you throw in climate change, things are also shifting, we're not really sure what's happening. Bird species, they can fly and find new areas. These large mammals, they can walk so far, but if there's fences or there's roads or whatever, they can't go any further. So they become more and more restricted and the population crashes and they'll never get back up to high enough levels than they were before because the food is not available. Tomorrow, hopefully, Shilling will go out with our environmental education team um, to spend the morning in the field with them to just see what they do, also to get to, to get to know a different uh, aspect of our work and see what they do. So you said you feel more confident in what I'm doing because you had the opportunity to, to do different things. Yes, the brief was really open. They didn't really have a solid brief. They said, okay, we want people to help our a World Giraffe Day for this year, and that's it. Because we don't really 100% know what we want, yeah. so it's a work in progress. It's pretty uh, self-initiated, which is a good thing. You sort of need to realize uh, where things can be better and how you can help on that, and then you kind of propose, like, this is the idea, that is the idea, and this is how can we do this. And you already also had to look at our website and said, look, there's lots of information, some things could probably be linked a little bit better. There were some small briefs as well, just like, you know, we want to do like a tire cover. So I do have some small things to keep me busy at that time. I started with the logo. That something I'm more familiar with. They have yeah. many versions of logos. They just have like people coming in and tripping and leave. They don't really have like consistent brand thing. Everything should be legible and don't here. More examples here, like you don't use outlines, no clashing colors, and you don't overlap pictures like that. So everything just yeah. to help you to formalize. Yeah, what the brand should look like. Yeah. like um, so when you use it, you can just refer to this guideline. I mean, I hope it covers most of the situation. Once you have this document, then you know what is the correct asset yeah. Yeah. to use as at the What's when, the agree what is exactly. the situation, yeah. exactly. And uh, I made new letterhead, business card, and things like that. You have this kind of a big campaign in your head, you know, running in the background. And when you have some time off, you'll be thinking, okay, so what shall we do for the World Draft Day? The big thing around World Draft Day is getting a brand, getting a voice, not just for one year, but for long term and, and giving us those ideas around, you know, how to facilitate moving forward and whatever the campaign we do, but how it can adapt and evolve. I started with the logo as well, because that's the only assets they have. And I designed a few versions of the new logo for them. But at that time, they already started a collaboration with other companies. So they already sent these assets to other people. I think one thing I was um, trying not to do is, you know, just go there and change everything they established and then leave. Mm. 
you know, because I, I just feel like I might not be responsible. And to be honest, I didn't hate the old logo, the original logo anyways. I just think, yeah, you know, there, there's some improvements that you can do. So what I did is that I upgraded the logo. That was like a small exercise for me. It's nice, it's really huh? Good. Yeah, it looks really clean and really modern. I like the colours on the, the multi-colours. Yeah. One, I think that's... No, I think it, it works really well. We've become clearer to me. I was thinking, you know, you should really use the power of your social media. So if we're going to do social media, and then we started to chat with their social media team. Instagram is again changing to really promote longer uh, form video rather than just short clips. Yeah. I think hopefully we will have enough resource for us to choose what, you know, what is the best. Because now we have all the options. We have shorter ones for, for stories, you know, 15 seconds. Yeah. And then yeah. we have longer versions for, you know, Instagram TV yeah. or whatever. So hopefully that will be fine. I think the, the, the logo at the very beginning, you don't really need to say Operation Chiba. No, just no, say, no, no, no. Just say drugs yeah. and trouble. This is yeah. the first yeah. frame. That's the first it's, thing you see. I yeah. agree with that. Then also the visual materials is something I've been working on. I just think it's something that is, is a bit missing for the social media. Mostly we're posting the giraffe pictures. We don't have a, much of branding elements or graphic assets. For example, when we're talking about the giraffe has gone extinct in at least seven African countries, and then we can you know, show this as a data, so it's more of a graphic thing rather than having a giraffe picture deck. I think it's just something good to have. Yeah, it definitely to have more graphics. It will be helpful to build the recognition for the word draft day, you know, visually. I helped them to reconstruct the World Draft Day website page so they have a clearer information for people who are pretty passionate about this thing and would like to get involved and help. And we also made a little document for them, like the guide for World Draft Days. If you wanted to help, uh, this is something you can do you know, for fundraising, for games and activities in the zoos. And I was working on the creative ideas what you could do, you know, to use you know, either social media or what collaboration you could make. Another one is a stand tour. It's a stand tour for giraffe. And uh, so this is something I think potentially can develop into a challenge and I think it would be quite fun yeah, to do that. Yeah, that, that could be quite cool. I think that's a good idea. Maybe they can get the giraffe to do a tower. <laughs> that would be amazing. That's like the killer. We basically want them to be in the week while giraffe. Exactly, so. exactly. Yeah. In the end, I made a timing plan for this year's World Giraffe Day campaign. I did the rebrand of um, World Giraffe Day, repaired a set. I also helped them build a template um, for all the key visual with PowerPoint because that's the only software they use. They don't use any design software, they don't have any in-house designer either, so with the templates, they can make their own content after my departure. I did some basic strategy and the planning work. I helped them with some creative ideas for World Draft Day this year. I think eventually I built a toolkit that they could take on um, for the future. When the tides finally come to the end, um, it was time to go home. I saw a lot of potential in this project and I wish I had more time to do it. There was a lot of new learnings for me. I jumped out of my comfort zone. I tested skills I'm not familiar with. And, uh, and I'm glad I did as much as I could.